it's such an honor to be introduced by a sex genius. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, uh, you know, I knew I was gay from pretty much day one. And a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, but I was a lot like Chris. I was a very precocious kid. All my earliest memories are very gay. But also, I got the chance to meet the lady who used to live next door to us at, my parents had like a, a reunion of people who used to live in the neighborhood. And her son was born the same month I was. So when we were toddlers, we were always together. And she said, do you know, when you were both still in diapers, you were already trying to get my son out of his. <laughs> so I knew I was gay from a very young age, let's say maybe one, but I didn't know I was kinky until I was 41. I created this show called Risk, where people tell true stories they never thought they'd dare to share. And sometimes in the early days, I would just go out and do risky things and come back on the show and tell stories about them. So one night, I had a fellow on the show who told a story about a woman he met at an erotic biting workshop. And I said to him, hey, where does one attend an erotic biting workshop. And he said, oh my gosh, Kevin, I'm going to the place I took that workshop this coming weekend. It's this kink camp. And it's four days of just sex and workshops and activities and parties and it's just kink, kink, kink. And I said, oh, <laughs> well, I know I've told, you know, sexy kind of stories on the show before, but I don't know anything about dominance and submission and all that kind of stuff. And he said, Kevin, take a risk. <laughs> so I went, and I had a eureka moment. Seeing all this incredible stuff was just so awakening for me. And so I became kind of obsessed with this whole idea of role play around dominance and submission. But I wasn't quite sure where I fit on that spectrum. Anyway, I came home from the camp and I set up a little profile on one of the kink sites and this fella reached out to me. He was a Korean fella and he was coming to America from Korea to stay for a while and he was interested in playing with me. And I said, wonderful. I, I, I said, oh my gosh, you're an artist? Oh, could I see some of your art? He shared his website with me. And I'm looking at his art and I'm like, oh my gosh, he is a genius. <laughs> like, he was very, very accomplished and talented. And I was like, oh, it is going to be so much fun submitting to this man. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. I want you to dominate me. And I said, oh, of course, of course, yeah, no problem. I <laughs> do it all the time. Well, that was when I started to learn about a thing we call dominant anxiety. It's when you're supposed to be the master, but you have that imposter syndrome feeling, right? Because dominants are supposed to be like the billionaire in Fifty Shades who happens to know how to do everything. And I usually don't feel that way as I walk through my life. <laughs> so I started reaching out to other friends who had some experience with dominance and said, oh gosh, can you give me some tips before I play with this guy so I don't look like an idiot? And they said, Oh, the first tip is, if you're worried about your dominance, put a blindfold on them right from the start so they can't see what a fuck up you are. They literally can't see you sweat. So I said, okay, okay, I'll give that a try. Well, his name was Du, and he came over to my apartment, and we chatted for a while, and he was really impressive. I was like, how am I going to do this? But he was determined that we were going to play these roles, and I said, okay, your safe word will be red. Cool, safe word is red. And then I put a blindfold on him, 
and he melted into my arms like a piece of wet spaghetti. And I thought, oh, he's really good <laughs> at this submitting thing. My job might be pretty easy here. See, because when you think of it, if you're coming into a scenario as a submissive, you're kind of like an improv actor. You're just showing up and playing. But if you're the dominant, you're like the director and the writer and the producer. You know, you got a lot of stuff to do. So especially with my ADHD and inability to tie any rope, I was a little nervous, but nevertheless, he melted into my arms. I put him on my bed and started tying him as best as I knew how to various bedposts. Well, here's the thing. I had a rescue cat at that time, and his name was Mr. Pooh. Mr. Pooh, his personality was not nearly as cute as his name. He was a fighter. He still had his balls, which they're not supposed to have. The woman who gave him to me assured me, oh, those don't work. I took him to the vet. They're like, they're right there. So he had kind of become a little bit more like a mountain lion. And Mr. Pooh jumped up on the bed while Dew was all tied up. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't let Mr. Pooh interrupt my mojo. So I grabbed the cat, and that's when Mr. Pooh sunk one of his fangs all the way into my thumb. Now, my thumb just started spurting blood. I didn't know it did it like that. I didn't know, like, I had seen it in Monty Python movies. But here it was really happening just all over the place. I'm like, oh my god, I, I can't let you know this is happening. He's blindfolded, so he'll never know. But it's like, spurt, 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 out of control. I'm running around trying to find something to wrap it up. And then I knock into a light fixture, which hits the ground and shows the blood spatters all over. And I go, ah! And that makes the blood spurt further, and it splashes dew in the face. And I say, red, red, red. And he says, you're so floating? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I had to bring it to a stop. And that's the night I learned that when you're the dominant, you can order your submissive to take you to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were in the waiting room, and Dew said, Hey, do you remember when we first started chatting on the kink site, you said that your philosophy was, you'll try anything twice? <laughs> I had said that because I'd heard someone at camp say that. And I said, Oh, yeah, 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 I guess I'll try anything twice. He said, Well, tonight you accidentally tried blood play. I wonder when the next time will be. <laughs> Well, that was 10 years ago, and thankfully, we're still wondering. <laughs> Thank you very much.